the way students are learning. NBC's Peter Alexander explains. Boston Latin School is America's oldest public school, educating students for 375 years. Among its famed alumni, founding fathers John Hancock, Samuel Adams, and Benjamin Franklin. Today, the school is creating a new generation of leaders, teenagers who are changing the way we view the environment. I was thinking of like the outdoor situation of the garden. This is the school's Youth Climate Action Network, Youth Can for short. Now one of the most popular clubs on campus. The first meeting, I had 90 kids show up, and I thought, <laughs> I'm going to need some help. What happened in 1803? Kate Arnold teaches eighth grade history. After showing her class an inconvenient truth, the documentary about climate change, her students were immediately inspired to act. Climate change is a really urgent issue that we all need to really be aware of and combat in our daily lives. The students first commissioned an energy audit of the school and were appalled by the low score. So they committed themselves to making their building more eco-friendly introducing recycling in the cafeteria and installing energy efficient fluorescent lights in the auditorium. But their most ambitious plan? To transform the school's roof into a state-of-the-art green learning center. I don't think that's been the great thing about it for me is that they don't have any sense of we can't do this. The design calls for wind turbines, solar panels, vegetation to absorb runoff, even a greenhouse to grow food for school lunches. I said to the kids early on, if you want to do something, you need to do something big enough that you really get people excited about it, because otherwise it's not going to get funded. Just identify the light courts. The students selected architect Gail Sullivan, a parent at the school, because Sullivan insisted they be an integral part of the design process. You can use, like, for example, wood or aluminum. Scientific data collected from the roof will be downloaded and studied by students at other schools. The project's estimated price tag? five million dollars with most of the fundraising being done by youth can students we're trying to educate people about climate education and now actively you know, courting school alumni city officials and private industry if the students here at boston latin school have their way this won't be the only green roof in the neighborhood they've already persuaded five nearby colleges to follow suit their goal to significantly reduce boston's carbon footprint this satellite photo shows the neighborhood today Here's what it could look like tomorrow. But the youth can students' ambitions extend well beyond Boston. Uh, we're going to develop an email list to help us share project ideas and recruitment tools. They host an annual Climate Action Summit at MIT, attracting hundreds of students from around the state. Youth can and they're working with teachers to create a sustainability curriculum with hopes other schools will follow their lead. Environmental activism in general is, is not just about stopping climate change, but it's really about building stronger, better societies. There are energy issues that we will all have to face as the future generations. So our main focus now has really turned to educating for sustainability. The idea is that this is one of the things that everybody just needs to know about. It's like stop, drop, and roll in kindergarten. We want it to be something that's really integrated into school culture and not something that's limited to one class. Kate Arnold says the lessons her students have learned aren't just about climate change and the environment. <laughs> They're learning how to, how to organize and be leaders. It's given them the belief that they can do things that make a real difference. From America's oldest school, some of the nation's newest thinking. For today, Peter Alexander, NBC News, Boston. I wish them luck. It sounds like a great idea. Just ahead, some summer.